Welcome to another episode of the JBK Show. On this week's episode, we're sitting with an Australian journalist, radio presenter, TV presenter, the one and only Richard Wilkins. Hello, boys. Nice to see you. Pretty long list there, Richard. Oh, well, if you stick around long enough and work hard, you, you, know, you notch up a few credits <laughs> yeah, along the way. Yeah, that's very true. Can we call you Dickie? Can you we... can call me whatever you like. Okay. We know you're born in New Zealand. You don't hear that. We don't hear the accent. You've been, you've been in Australia a long time. How was it making the transition from New Zealand, bringing the band over, all of that, and then, you know, kind of putting your flag down here in Australia? Well, New Zealand's a beautiful country. I'm proud and honoured to... I've got dual citizenship these days. But um, it's a little country, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, doing what I did, I'm traveling around New Zealand with my band. I trained as a school teacher, but I never really thought I'd end up doing that. And, and too attractive for a school teacher. Didn't, uh, <laughs> so I didn't know what I was going to be doing and earning and everything, you know, years down the track. So anyway, the band was, and I'd always played music. Um, once you've traveled around New Zealand a few times in the back of a van and played most of the venues there, Australia lurks as this great of land of opportunity just a three-hour flight away when you're overseas do you introduce yourself as australian or new zealander well i'm both so i can Dual. have the best of both worlds <laughs> there you go no i think my i think i sound like an aussie the kiwi accent's a bit sort of thicker mm. you know six slunks or swimming pool all that sort of yeah but i never i don't think i ever had a particularly strong kiwi accent we kind of have a similar feel like we do a lot of uh, content like socials content and we feel we can sometimes feel Australia can be a bit more limiting. It's very, you know, mainstream dominated. Did you get that sense when you were in New Zealand? Say, I've done everything I can do here. How come you chose Australia, especially in entertainment? How come you chose Australia over somewhere like the United States? Well, I think um, coming to Australia was a big leap at the time. You know, mm. I, I moved from Palmerston North, which is a t small little, what's well, a university town, but moving from Palmerston to Auckland was a big sort of leap Going to the city. at the time. And then coming here, it seemed like the next step in the journey. I mean, part of me at the time, or a few years in, thought, why didn't I just keep going and go to sort of London or you know, LA or something? LA, yeah. Um, but th I never even contemplated that. That was just sort of way b beyond what my brain could sort of handle at the time. But also, a lot of bands had, had taken the step, bands like Split Ends and Dragon and My Sex. You're too young to probably remember most of them. I'll but Google them. I'll Google them. Yeah, so big Kiwi bands, and they came to Australia and sort of kicked on from here. So that was the plan. Mm. Um, and I came here. I've spent a week in Sydney and a week in Melbourne, staying with friends. I didn't have two bobs to rub together, <laughs> but I, and I didn't know where I wanted to put my roots down. But I figured it'd be one of those two cities. And uh, I fell in love with. I love Melbourne, but I, I Sydney felt like home. More to do in Sydney. Well, I don't know. I love Melbourne. I love going to Melbourne. It's a fantastic mm. city. Um, but but Sydney, you know, felt felt like home. And you, you brought a band over here, but you'd always said to people that you wanted to get into television. No, didn't know what you wanted to do, but you always had a, a you, you think you had a career in entertainment. What pulled the trigger in saying, okay, I'm going to go on TV? Well, I got a job. MTV? <laughs> no, I got a job before that. Um, I was doing bits and pieces and I was sort of singing on a midday show like the Mike Walsh show. Mm. I brought the band over, sort of bits and pieces of the band. We gave it a real good crack, toured around a bit, toured with Grace Jones, went on Countdown, released some, some records, but it all, it, didn't, it just didn't block fire really. Mm. You know, we did okay, but I just, my mum was staying with me once from New Zealand and I, you know, couldn't afford a sort of dining table, so she, she had to shout, shout us a couple of hundred bucks for that. And I didn't like not having any money. So I got a job um, working in radio as a promotions manager at Today FM, which was a new FM station back then. There were only two. It was Today FM and Triple M, and that was it. I started working there and really enjoyed that and started spinning discs in nightclubs and things. And then I worked for another, 2UW, as it, as it was then, and um, really enjoyed that, but I... Yeah, I kept thinking that I'd like to be on TV. I'd done a little bit of television in New Zealand, not much. <laughs> but I just made it a point to, you know, tell everybody I wanted to do it. Spoke it into existence. It's, it's sort of, yeah. Mm. Um, and then a show, well, a thing came up called Club Superstation, which was like the forerunner of Sky TV. Okay. But it was really only broadcasting into, it was the start of satellite television in Australia. But it was, it was only broadcasting to a few pubs and clubs around New South Wales. Nevertheless, 
it gave me a chance to sort of notch up a few flying hours. Peter Overton, used to be the newsreader on mm. Channel 9 in Sydney, was used to call the dogs there. He would call the dog The race, greyhounds. The greyhounds. Jeez. And Pete, I've got to start somewhere. Pete, Pete was, he was good. Caller. Yeah. So, righto. Well, we'll be back to Adapto very shortly for race three. But right now, let's go to Richard, who's got, we've got some more music for us. And I go, right, thank you, Pete. <laughs> In excess of kind of, you know, blah, 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 new video. And here, oh, Rich, well, so I go back to Adapto. So, you know, and that's tr true story. Sometimes when we're out having a drink and a few people around, Pete will lapse into those days and we'll have a good old laugh and a, a trip down memory lane. But the good thing about that was that it gave me, I think it was six months we did that i did that mm. and it was like live to air from let's say seven till eleven o'clock at night um live 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 and i notched up a few f flying hours as i said because it takes a bit of time to get comfortable with the camera then i read in the sunday paper that mtv was coming to australia uh so this is at the end of 1986 we do, are do now. you feel like this the mtv when you land this job, was, was kind of your big break in getting on camera? Sure was, yeah. Um, and But they didn't say who was going to be hosting the thing. So I rang my agent, because I was doing a little bit of acting and stuff at the time, and said, can you find out about this thing? And um, uh, she was looking after Russell Crowe at the time. She said, oh, Russell's going up to audition wow. for it, so you should, you should go along as well. And I did, <laughs> spoke to the executive producer there, and it just felt like the perfect combination of everything I'd done in the past. And we had a nice meeting. They sent me away, told me to write some scripts and come back the next day or whenever it was and do some stuff to camera. And you know, I enjoy writing, so I, I think I wrote some nice little intros and fun facts and stuff. And, uh, and I, I just knew instinctively I was going to get the job. How big was MTV at the time? It was pretty big. Yeah. Changed, um, it changed the way music was marketed and presented. You know, there were bands who were, who, were, who owe their careers, really, to, to being on MTV. Suddenly, the way you looked was just as important as the way you sound. In the, in the States, it had been going for a few years, and we were the first international affiliate for MTV. So, and Channel 9 had MTV. Mm. Um, you know, when Mr. Packer first did the deal, um, he intended to just play MTV all night, just flick a switch, and it'd be cheap overnight programming. Because TV didn't used to go 24 hours back in those days. Wow. It would, someone would flick the switch and it'd go to test pattern through the night. But so it was originally intended to be cheap overnight programming, but then he realized that wasn't going to work. And we, we did a three hour, it's like a three hour live to air sort of rock and roll video show. Sound like the perfect mix for you coming from music then venturing it becomes music video, uh, music videos, entertainment, and all things around music. Did that kind of feel like the best fit for you, and that kind of allowed you to go into, you know, entertainment journalism as well, yeah. and what your role is with the Today Show over the last thirty-five years? Yeah, well, I recognised it was a great opportunity, and it was a sort of combination of everything I'd done before. I had been a singer, played in bands. I knew when I was interviewing artists and things that what they may be going through or sort of mm. saw it from, I'd tried, I'd been a bit of a songwriter, played some music, studied English and music at university so I had, you know, could bash out a script. I found myself comfortable with the camera, largely thanks to that six months I spent at uh, Club Superstation and it just felt right. And I, I figured that uh, if I played my cards right and the, and the cards fell well, that it could lay a foundation for a career in television. Um, so we signed a, th I, was, um, I think a month's trial at first, and just think, oh, if, if they sack me tomorrow, <laughs> they'll have to pay me till the end of the week. So that means I can pay for the car and I can pay groceries. Maybe and the dining table. Yeah. And get the dining table. <laughs> no, I'd already got that. <laughs> the ra working radio would pay for that. Um, but yeah, I saw it as a great opportunity, and it, it felt really great. And MTV was such a great brand to be part of. It was hip. It was cool. It was mm. new. It was fresh. We were doing. We were traveling the world, interviewing, you know, rock stars, going to the MTV Awards, wow. and um, having a, it was a pretty good ride. So it was a three year, three years, and then another three years. So it was six years till the day at which point MTV America wanted to do their own sort of twenty four hour channel here, mm. which they did. And by that time, Foxtel was up and running, and all a whole bunch of different channels. Television had changed dramatically in that time, but it was a great break, and I. 
I think I made the most of it. So speaking of television changing, yeah, you've been with the Today Show for 35 plus years. Mm. What, what's the actual well, not number necessar- now? Well, no, not necessarily with the Today Show. I mean, I started, our first MTV on Channel 9 was the 16th of April. Okay, so with the Nine Network. 16th of April, 1987. Yeah, MTV offered me a job in the States early on. They said, you know, come and work out in New York, West 57th Street, my first Christmas. So that must have been at the end of 87. Mm. We shut down here for summer for six weeks or something, as most shows did over that period. You know, ratings were off, so... Mm. Everyone went to the beach. Um, and I went to New York, it was freezing cold, and worked for American MTV over there. Uh, and went pretty well. It felt like a pretty big deal. And they, at that point, said, you know, and it was a big thing for them to see if they could get an Aussie there because it was very American. But MTV was becoming much, much more international. Mm. And I actually surprised myself by saying no. Um, Why did you say no? Hard to turn yeah, down that. Well, sort of, yeah. Um, I, I had I had two little kids growing up in Sydney, mm. and um, a marriage that that wasn't going well. And uh, but I, yeah, I surprised. Well, I put the kids first, basically. Yeah, very honourable. And um, not all of it was entirely honourable, but <laughs> but that's what I that's what I did, and it was it was a good decision, and I felt comfortable with it. It just mm. felt off. Felt like I'd be. Biting off way too much. And I did get, you know, I've had endless opportunities to travel a lot. So it's not like I was depriving myself of mm. seeing what was going on around the world. But I did, um, yeah, I said, and I'd only been going for six months. Wow. So, you know, we started in April, so that was the end of the year. I said, I've just signed a contract. It's going well. I love the people I'm working with. Mm. I love Channel 9. I still do. Um, they're just great people. It's just a great Feeling great spirit, great. Surely you've got to be their longest reigning employee. <laughs> no, I don't, well, I think Pete Overton's probably really? he kicked on after the dogs. So, <laughs> but no, well, I don't know. I guess I'd be up there. Yeah, yeah. they don't give an award out for that. No, they they a few yeah. tributes. There's been a, ha- a handful of tributes over yeah, time. Yeah, people have been very nice. Yeah, but I think you know the whole entertainment scene, if I can mm. say that, has kind of exploded in that time. The sort of fascination with celebrity and you know Instagram and. And the height of television, that's what I was going to ask. Do you think, I mean, being in, in television in the 90s and even the early 2000s, do you think that is the peak of television as a medium? With things like social media nowadays and everything like that, do you, do you feel like most at, that, at that, that point. point in time that was the most eyes on you at one point? I don't know, possibly, probably, yeah. Television was still a growth industry in those days. Mm. You know, we were trying to get people to watch TV instead of... Reading the listening paper, listening to the radio, and reading the paper exactly. Mm. So yeah, it was it was it was growing. Now the pie has certainly got more slices out of it, with with as you say, pay, even just pay TV and Netflix and all that, all that mm. stuff. And kids these days don't necessarily get their news the old-fashioned way. You know, I, I still love sitting down and watching the the six o'clock news. I you know it's, and I'm sure a lot of people my age do. Mm. It's just it's. It's like a comfy pair of slippers. You sit down there and watch them. Watch a bit of Eddie McGuire first. I love Millionaire Hot Seat because I love. A, <laughs> I, I do. I love. You I love. Quiz a, yourself. I do. It's, it sounds corny, I know, but <laughs> that time of the day, I feel like sitting down. Maybe have a little G and T mm. and see see how smart or otherwise that you are with your general knowledge. I, lo- <laughs> I love all that. Mm. And then watch the news, see what's happened in the day, and uh, take it from there. Do you feel like you maybe need? Or especially television as well. Television networks need to transition more to social media to get that younger audience. Well, I think they are. I think yeah. they're changing all the time. And Nine's now got Stan, which is huge. A lot of sport goes to to Stan. It's it's a it's a lot more fragmented. Um, it's just the nature of that's just change, you know. Um, but I, I television still the big end of town in terms of you know the mass mass oh, market. Sure. Yeah, people still aspire to get as, on television, especially in in Australia, but. Like I said, over, over that career, you've interviewed some of the cream of ce- Hollywood celebrities and celebrities across the world. You probably get asked this all the time. Who is your favourite celebrity interview or someone that you've developed a relationship with over time? Well, I, sh- I, should, I should have a stock standard response to that. But I, I honestly don't. I mean, most people are terrific. Um, I, have, I, love, I love interviewing people, songwriters, musicians, performers. Um, I think they're my favourites. People, I think 
writing a song is like magic. I love magic too. Mm. I love. <laughs> a big fan of yeah, like the magicians. I, I love magicians. The guy going around town at like Jackson Aces. He's yeah. Just, uh, do you know Jackson? We know. Yeah, we follow yeah. him on Instagram. Oh, We've actually. Man. It was at a Christmas party we were at. We get along really well. Uh, he's, he's a freak. He's yeah. a freak. He is just brilliant. I, yeah. It just does my head in. Shout out to Jackson. Oh, Jack. Did he do the one with you where you had to like start typing stuff into your phone and it yeah. ends up on today's date? Yeah. Oh, oh, I, saw him, I saw him swallow a whole balloon animal and I just thought... He's, oh, you know, and then he asks shit. you stuff, you know, a, a name, who, who you're thinking of and such and so. And you'll say it and then he'll pull a thing out of someone's wallet and it's got a, it written down what you've just... I, mean, I don't know how he does it. <laughs> or you write on a card and all of a sudden it... You know, in that fridge. Yeah. <laughs> he prepared it maybe three weeks in advance. No, Nobody can't. Can't. It's can't. crazy. It's I crazy. don't know. It's slight of how I don't know. Mm. But I love magician, and um, for me, writing a song. You know, when Neil Finn sits down, and he he likes writing songs in his rocking chair out the front of his house, um, and you know, half an hour later, there's a song <laughs> that the world is singing along to. A couple of months, I think that is just the most wonderful. Fabulous creative. thing. It's, it's, extremely what's creative. The, it's, the, it's the height of creativity. Is, is there anyone that you wished you've interviewed over the last, you know, 30 plus years? Well, I've, I must say I've, in, I've interviewed most of the, my idols, you know, people like Bruce Springsteen, Paul McCartney, mm -hmm. um, Rod Stewart's become a mate. You know, Chris Martin I interviewed the other day from Coldplay. I love Coldplay so much. Them a couple you're going to Perth? Damn right. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a joyous experience seeing Coldplay in concert. Michael Bublé just uh, got to town. He's a, he's, he's a lovely guy. He's a bit uh, late for Christmas. A good man. No, no, no. no, no, no. no, no. <laughs> we it's love Michael. Uh, Michael's, Michael's wonderful. He's a terrific guy, a real family man. Brings the whole family with him. Richard, I'm not going to make any money on this tour. <laughs> um, which is not quite true. But, um, <laughs> you know, people, you know, I love, I love people like that. And... Mm. You know, I could go on, but th those sort of people, and I guess that generation, really. You lean definitely more towards musicians, and you still you're still with Smooth ninety five point three, our favorite radio station. Of only play the old school bangers. Do you like holding on to that music side of, of yourself? You know, being the host uh, on that. Oh, it's on a, that it's stage? a terrific job. It's a we're doing so well. We've been going, I think, eleven years now. Smooth. 95, well, we're now national, 95.3 in Sydney, 91.5 in Melbourne, and now on DAB digital mm -hmm. around the rest of the country, which is fantastic. You do like, you do the 10 to 1 slot? I do 10 to 1 on Saturdays and Sundays, mm. yeah. I, I love it. I love the music. I love the connection that it gives me. Um, I think the hosts make it. You know, you got Cameron Datto, Cameron's Bogart great. in the morning, they're just soothing voices, you and then they David, play the best music. David David Campbell was, mm -hmm. is fantastic. Melissa Doyle's wonderful. You know, it's a it's a great team. We all get on. It's a kind of an ego-free zone. We, we're all friends and fans of each mm. other's. Um, seriously. Was that different to television? Everyone's got egos. <laughs> no, well, I mean, you, you, you need a certain ego to assume that you're, you know, good enough to, oh. to, to talk to a, a, an audience or to go on television. But you need to, to keep it in check. Um, I've got a lot of, a lot of friends um, in the business, a lot of friends out of the business, too. What do, you, what do you prefer, television or radio? Especially like at this point in your career. I like it all. And fortunately, I can do both of those things. Yeah. You know, that's not a question of having to make a choice. I think choice. when we were speaking to Ben, I think he said he preferred radio. It's just mm. easier. Ben Ford, I mean, more he, control over what I he mean, was doing. I mean, the, the early mornings as well. You're still getting up fairly yeah. early, like this morning. You, you, you're just accustomed to that lifestyle now? I think so. Well, every day is different. You know, I don't do the early, early shift. Um, anymore well not all the time anyway um but i do some stuff on the today show at rob rob thomas from matchbox 20 there today i did a couple of interviews with tom holland and um amanda seyfried this morning which will probably up i think on monday or tuesday or something mm -hmm. lily rose depp johnny depp's daughter he's got this new show that i'm talking to her about on monday so i still do stuff for the today show and i'm on the extra show a couple of um a couple of times a day because wow. I love having that daily you know you can break a story or follow a story and, and it's nice having that daily interaction and I do um, big interviews you know I had uh, Michael Bublé on A Current Affair on Saturday night um, and, and that was great I did a thing with Keanu an exclusive for 
for the Nine Network a little while back. Um, so getting a nice big chunky interviews and spreading them across the network is is great. Also, it's good. I love I love the variety. I love to be being, able to do. Being across the he just dropped they, like ten big names. They got they got me out there for the footy the other night when um, the day Tina Turner. Yes. Uh, left us. I had the pleasure of introducing her at the, the big uh, Winfield Cup Grand Final in 1993. So, uh, and it was lovely that they replayed a bit of that in her honour. So, it's nice to be able to do stuff like that. Mm. And spread the share the love around. It's do, good. You, do you ever have a time where you're talking to a guest and you're just thinking to yourself like, "This is a, a, such a great job." Like I'm talking to Tom Holland. I'm talking to say Fred Keanu Reeves. Uh, You've just I'm become that accustomed to it now. You know, it's like it's like it's. No, numb. I always take it seriously, and I, mm. you know, I always prepare. And at four o'clock in the morning, when you're waiting for an interview to come through on the Zoom link and junket that they were doing, and I don't even know where they were. They're probably in LA this morning. Um, you know, you you have time to prepare, and I make notes, and I don't just sort of wing it. Um, and you you know you watch watch the content to see what you're going to ask them, mm. and you want to. I hate to start. Asking questions like off a press release, you've got to try and that everyone's asking. Do you have that freedom to do that? Like, it's like just like ask the stock standard questions. No, you normally with those junkets, you don't have very long. You've only got five or six minutes, and mm. the film studio like you, particularly with with actors and stuff. They like to now, Richard. We want to keep this on topic. You know, we're talking about the show. Mm. Um, you know, no questions about. Zendaya, or you know, his relationship, or something of, like sort that. Sort of thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to stay away from personal questions, but you know, they yeah. sometimes the publicists say on it. Whereas musicians are happy to talk about anything and everything. Pretty much anything. Yeah. yeah. In 2014, you're on the Queen's Birthday Honor List. I was. Into the uh, Order of Australia. Order, into the Order of Australia. I've never really heard of the Order of Australia. Is this like like an Illuminati of celebrities? What, what is this? <laughs> it's uh, something of which I'm very proud, and I wear my my pin. Um, Daily, um, I said to General Sir Peter Cosgrove, "When are you supposed to wear this?" You wear it all the time. Not everybody's got one. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I it, well, it was for your work through charities and in entertainment. That's right. Um, I was in. Well, I, I still am a New Zealand citizen. Pre, prior to about that time, to become an Aussie citizen, you used to have to renounce your uh, any other okay. foreign citizenship, and I never would have done that because you know, my parents. Grandparents, you know, went to war, and that's where I'm from, and it would have felt wrong but the, to do that. But there was a time when you could have both, and I think that still applies. So, and I figured my kids are here, I'm living here, I'm paying taxes here, and also I was hosting the um, G'day USA stuff in. Mm. I did about fifteen of those in Los Angeles and New York, and I sort of lived in fear that some someone would out me or them for. How come we got a bloody Kiwi hosting at AUSA? So I thought it was prudent to um, to get an Aussie citizenship as well when I could. And when they, you know, they sort of put the feelers out and say, mm. you know, if you were to be considered for this award, would you accept it? And I said, yeah, I'd be honoured. And um, you know, in due course, a year later or something, your name comes up in the Queen's Birthday Honours, and um, I was extremely chuffed, especially with your work on the Today Show and with the Nine Network. You know, you've you've seen Carl take a, a leave of absence here and there. Lisa Wilkinson's gone to another network. Did you ever, during your time, go, okay, maybe I want to take a little bit of a break, or I'd like to do something else? Um, no, never like that. I've I've become sort of uh, infamous, I guess is the word, for for not really taking breaks and and kind of working through only because over the Christmas period is a great time to work. Mm. You know, a lot of the bands have albums coming out for Christmas. A lot of the film, big films come out for Boxing Day. So it's always a, a fun time to, um, to be working rather than taking sort of December and January off. So I've, I've always worked through, but I am actually this year taking um, an, a couple of extended breaks. Well, you've earned it. Yeah. Well, it's nice to do it. You know, I've, I'm going to take a, a week here and there in, in, in Europe. Um, uh, my son is Christian is living in LA at the moment, so okay. I aim to to get up there a little bit. But um, no, I've I've always figured you've got to keep the foot on the accelerator, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Carl Carl had a year off, and in hindsight, it was a pretty good thing. Lisa's obviously, you know, the, 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 that whole thing that's um, you know got blown out of all proportion, I think. But um, 
Have you ever have you ever had to field an offer from even a rival network? Oh, I've had a couple of phone calls over the years. Yeah. yeah have they not tried to poach you? Mm, no, have. no, I've, no. I've had a couple of calls from mm. a couple of people, both Good. here and and internationally Absolutely. over mm. over the years. But you know, I've always been very loyal to Channel Nine. They've been very loyal to me. Um, you know, my kids have gone to good schools. They've always looked looked after me in every in every sense, and I I've become very good friends with a lot of people there. And I'm I'm my father's son. You know, he worked he worked at BP, the petrol company, for I think thirty five years, and that wow. was what I sort of that was the the mentality, the understanding that you know I I grew up with. You find find a job you like, you try and be the best can at that mm. and happy days have a great yeah. life we play a game with guests uh each week called fill in the blanks three quick fire questions mm. rich just give us your your answer okay. Okay. blank is your favorite film godfather yeah godfather i was hoping you'd say uh, that yeah. we're good fellas guys as well we'd be like yeah bit of scorsese blank is your favorite musician Favorite musician, mm -hmm. maybe Chris Martin. Chris Martin, Coldplay, yeah. Uh, yeah I got to agree with Grave Four. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're always in my uh, albums, yeah. or playlists. <laughs> and Blank has been your favorite on-air colleague. My favorite. There's too many to name. Mm. You know. Um, I worked with Sylvia Jeffries this morning. How do you go past her? There you go. <laughs> Recency bias. Yeah. But it Recency still checks bias. out. Yeah. No, they're, good. they're a great mm. bunch of people. You know, we, those days when we were all, when Fordo, who's said nice things about me, God bless him, you know, we, we had a pretty good time there when, when the show used to travel a lot. Carl and Lisa and Georgia Gardner and Fordo and I, we, you know, we'd go to New York for a week and broadcast out of the studios there. Yeah. I, I, all those, it's Georgie's birthday today. Um, Have you heard that, Georgie Gardner? All the David, David Campbell, Sylvia, mm. you know, Alex Brook, the t the, t the team at the Today Show, fantastic. Jane has a party. I I, I love those. They're things. all your favourites. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're great people. Yeah. Tracy Grimm. They, these are these are good, talented, hardworking people. I feel like a lot, a lot of people don't see all the hard work that goes on behind the scenes, especially in television. What would be your word of advice to the aspiring Richard Wilkins or the next Richard Wilkins? Get up early, stay up late, and work your ass off. There you go. That's, that's simple advice. That's the secret. <laughs> no, Richard, really appreciate your time. Uh, I hope you enjoy your deserved break off yeah, here thanks. and there. Enjoy and Ibiza. Yeah. And keep killing it, mate. Good on you. Yeah. Thanks, boys. Thank you, mate. Fun. Fun. Cheers. Yeah, no worries.